player 2 has joined the game. Hey yo, what's up everybody and welcome to another two player co-op Friday show. It's been a while. As always, I'm one of your hosts here, Kevin, along with my brother from my mother show one. How we doing? Pretty good. Again, it's been a while. If, if as you heard, as it were, as it will be, as it has been written and will be done, on our Let's Play we did this Monday, if you saw that, we did Virtua Cop. It was just a lot of fun, but we said in there, it's been a while since we've done Let's Plays. It's been a while since we've done a Friday show as well. We're going to try to get more regular with this extra content in addition to the podcast, so thank you guys for hanging in there. I'm not going to make any promises, but we're going to try our best to make it more of a weekly thing. We're not going to hit every week, but we're going to do the best we can. Uh, the Friday show, we're kind of thinking about changing it up anyways, because a lot of times we've seen that we do kind of like a Game Over Greggy show at the beginning of the podcast where we just talk about lots of other stuff other than video games. We may try to incorporate, 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 incorporate that into the Friday show. So the Friday show won't always be video game related. Today it does happen to be video game related, but just know that, um, it's, it's hard. Like we... (laughs) We're always like, oh, we got to come up with a video game topic to talk about the Friday show. And I'm always tired because we got a baby in life. But so I think if we don't just limit it to video games, because I mean, we, whenever we do our movie, it can be movies, stuff, it's Fridays. it can be games, it can be pop culture, it can yeah. be food. Like literally nothing is off the table. Love this, this table. Um, so anybody, if you have ideas you want us to talk about for 10, 15 60 minutes who knows how long they'll go yeah we're still not calling it a quick hit no these, these could be an stopped. hour and a half long yeah. but but yeah it's send it in show. well if it's something we know anything about we'll gladly talk about it so and on that note you can email us of course you can hit us on twitter i'm at kevin white 24 he's at real sean white together we're at two player underscore co-op or you can comment on the video at youtube.com slash two player co-op like subscribe share you can also email us if you want it's two player co-op gaming at gmail.com if you have a question you want to ask us, like a viewer did. That was quite the segue there. It was, right? Uh, no. I, I, it was just like it that just That was sarcastic. I'm not going to read his name. We will protect the names of the innocent, whatever it's called. And it's it, he's not, <laughs> he didn't do anything wrong. But he, <laughs> he posed a very interesting question that we've, we, we saw when we got the email, hadn't been able to broach it yet. Um, I'm going to email him back to just let him know we're talking about it this Friday. But anyway, so we got this email. I'll leave his name out. Hi, Kevin and Sean. A few days ago, and this came back in a few weeks ago in August, I stumbled across your YouTube channel and watched a video. I find you guys to be interesting and have good production value, and I always like to support small content creators. Thank you. You should tell that to Bob Mackey. I have to say it. You should tell it to everybody. They didn't like our boxes. Since then, I've been listening to some back issues on iTunes, and I'm impressed with the show. Great work. Thank you. That being said, I was a little taken aback on a recent episode where you discussed buying an SNES classic to flip. There was a comment added to the effect of, quote, being entrepreneurial. I'm not going to get on your butts for doing this. I realize you're far from the only ones. I just was surprised to hear that that's something you're okay with as you're obviously passionate about gaming, as am I. I've been on the receiving end of not being able to get a product I've really wanted due to scalpers, with my only option being being to pay an increased aftermarket price. I get the idea that quote a product is worth the price a product is worth what someone is willing to pay end quote, but I just don't have any respect for the practice. I don't feel like he's being mean, so I'm not calling anybody out. I'd rather see people who actually want the product be able to get it at the same price the retailer supplies it. Let me be clear: I'm only referring to new stock items. I wouldn't begrudge anyone for finding a valuable retro game on the cheap and reselling it at current market prices. They're just part of the game. I wish I could find Saturn Bomber Man on the cheap not to sell it to keep just to play it yeah again i don't want this to seem like a dig but i want to provide some feedback regarding this issue i'd be interested to hear you guys talk further on the practice and discuss if you feel it's ethical for any reason or if you feel the end justifies the means i'm a father of two kids shout out to you because i i yeah i know and i get the new family costs too i just think there's better ways to make extra income keep doing what you guys are doing i hope to see the podcast grow and we'll keep on listening thanks listener the other reason I want to touch on this this week is I saw something before we went on the air, which I just love to say. Reggie feels of me, friend of the show. I hope he's a friend. <laughs> I would love if he was a friend of the show. You said it like it was true. Yeah. Uh, he said something to the effect, I just saw a quick GameInformer.com article that he said, if you want an SNES classic, don't pay more than $80. 
re-edit the whole. We're making, we're making more this time. We're going to have more product on the shelves and all this. Reggie, I call BS because it seems like you guys put like 50 items up for pre-order. It seems like, yeah, I was lucky as hell to get one. Still don't know what I'm going to do about it. Maybe this conversation will change my mind, but that led me into thinking about this email and wanting to talk about it and everything. For, first, do you believe Reggie? No. Not at all. Not at all. Because they didn't make any switches at launch. They didn't make any SNES, cla- NES classics at launch. And they had almost no SNES classics to pre-order. Right. No, I, I, don't, I don't trust him as far as I can throw him. He's, he's a pretty big dude. He's a big guy. I love Reggie. My God, if we ever got Reggie on the podcast. Reggie, if you're ever in Memphis, let us know. So let's talk about this. So I will say this. I completely understand where he's coming from. Oh, I get it. I completely get it. I have never purchased a console before the Switch with the intent of trying to flip it. We both ordered two switches. It worked out for you. It did not work out for me. <laughs> when you, I mean, I saw, so it, uh, let's just be, let's just put our cards on the table. How many cards? We both pre-ordered two switches, which was a miracle in and of itself that we were able to do that. Uh, I sold mine on eBay for, I think, what did it end up being? 375 or something, but then I did free shipping. So that's coming out of my pocket. So 375 to the buyer. eBay takes 10%. PayPal takes 3%. Then I paid $20 for shipping. I literally think I made $5 when I flipped this. It was not worth the headache. I will say that. Sean, you sold yours locally. A little bit more money than I did. You didn't have to mess with all the overhead costs. You did it the right way. I did it the wrong way. But to me, and I'll be honest, like I said, I get where the viewer is coming from. I don't think of it as being unethical. The reason I say this is this. The main problem in this equation is not with those who are flipping the systems. If you should be mad at anybody. It's the people that are willing to pay that much for it. And Nintendo. Well, yeah, that too. (laughs) Nintendo, you are making... I mean, if I were to take my NES Classic apart, it's one little little friggin' motherboard with like maybe a gig of memory on it where they're just putting emulators on, and that's it. There is no way to have shortages of this. Same with the SNES Classic. There's no way. Also, do you want to know why they're they're reusing the, the, the ports from the Wii? The weird connector, the weird, like, almost like a backwards C connector. Because they've got them lying around from the Wii days. So they're like, well, let's just plug them into these these old school systems and use them. So long story short, I don't think it's ethically wrong to flip systems. But I, I definitely understand where you're coming from. I also think if, if one is willing... With, with the, when something comes out like the SNES Classic, and you know there's going to be no pre-orders, if you want to get one for seventy nine ninety nine, you have to do everything in your power to make that a reality. Meaning, you have to suffer through yep. <laughs> all of Wario's alerts. You have to sign up for email alerts from. And they don't really work. I don't think Walmart, Target, Amazon, Best Buy, Toys R Us, whoever else that's doing pre-orders. Because of Nintendo and the way they manufacture these consoles, you have to know that if you want one for $80, you have to put in all this extra effort that I did to actually get a pre-order. Yep. Um, And I still, it's looking like I may end up keeping this stupid freaking thing. Just because. There's also... And and the reason that the aftermarket is so crazy on these things is FOMO. What's FOMO, Sean? Fear of missing out. These collector items, why did you feel like you had... I mean, you were super excited for Breath of the Wild. Yep. But the collector's edition, you had to have the master edition or whatever it was called, right? Yep. Because it's your favorite series. Yep. 
I could have sold it easily day one for probably about four hundred dollars from what I saw on eBay. Wow. And I pay. I mean, I paid what one twenty, one thirty, yeah. whatever it was for it. It was one thirty. I could have sold. I could have just turned around and sold sold it for a two hundred and fifty dollar profit easily. But I didn't want to. I wasn't getting it to flip. I wasn't getting it to leave in the box and let it appreciate in value and sell. I wanted to take that master sword out and plop it right there in the mantle and just bask it. And I was totally fine with it. I think on the whole moral ethic issue of it all, I guess I'm kind of sort of neutral. I, I totally get what this person is saying, but at the same time I've done it and I made money on it and I'm not, I'm not, I don't feel bad about it. I'm not ashamed. But you know what else I've done or not done? I've never paid a ridiculous amount for any game system, whatever. I mean, the Master Edition, but that's what it costs. I never right. paid above and beyond because I can wait. I know, I mean, with the exception of maybe the NES Classic and probably the SNES Classic to follow. I know that I'm going to get one eventually. I don't need it right now. I'll keep my money. It's still going to be there someday. It's going to play the same way. Do I care that other people are playing it for a week, a month, a few months before I am? Not really. And if I really did, guess what? I would go pay all the extra money to get it right away. But and the, like and you said, I mean, the for the Switch, I think the first one I got that I pre-ordered was Amazon Best Buy. Cause it was when Best we were Buy. doing the podcast. Right. But we, we kind of just like, lucked uh, into it. We saw that they were up. We got it. We were up whatever. at like midnight or whatever when it actually went on sale again. Now this was not too long after Best Buy had just screwed me over on my Apple watch pre-order. Mm. So I did not feel very comfortable with that. I'm like, Which I want to go. And then I had a chance to pre-order it through Amazon. I'm like, I'm going to do this. I almost just canceled my Best Buy pre-order then. But I didn't. I'm like, I might as well hold on to it because Best Buy may screw up. I, you know, I want to make sure I get at least one. And I know I can sell it. Now, the Amazon one, I remember, I think I bought it at work. I don't know if it was like a keep hitting F5 it was a in the Wario window thing. It was waiting a Wario for it thing. to pop up. But like you said, it didn't cost me anything. But I put in the effort. I put in the work to it, get this. It cost you time. Right. I don't feel bad about it. If nobody's going to pay $500 for a Switch if they don't have $500. If they feel like they can part with $500 and they really want to Switch that bad, they'll pay it. If they can't, not to be too much of a D here, but you should have gone to Best Buy. Camp out at Best Buy. Right. Go there first thing in the morning. Like it's free. You just got to put in the time. Like you can get this. Yeah. I don't. I don't feel bad. I don't feel as though I'm taking advantage of people. I feel as though I'm. I'm selling it to people who are willing to pay extra money because they aren't willing to put in the extra time and effort to snag one when it first comes out. Yep. So I have no problem with it. I agree. And the other thing. So and he made reference to when I said. You know, he's a new father and obviously I'm new or he's, he's a father and I'm a father and all that. I was joking about being an entrepreneur. It was just me joking around. Uh, I mean, obviously if I'm selling it, I would like to make money on it, but it's not like, Oh my God, I've got to get this. So I've got it. So I'm going to make, how I'm going to pay the bills and stuff. Think back to when people were selling the Wii, when people wait out line in line outside Walmart target stuff and flip the Wii for like $1,500. Right. Not PS3. When it first launched for $600, people were selling that Joker for $1,500. It is supply and demand and all this other stuff. But again, kind of like what you said, if you want this system that bad for the $80 price tag, do what I did with the NES Classic. I didn't pre-order the NES Classic because you couldn't. I went at 5 in the morning. I drove up to GameStop to look at what was going on. I already saw two people in line, and I said, oh, my God. I called Jess. I said, get my laptop bag ready. I'm going to go work from GameStop. She said, what? I said, you heard me. Get it ready. I'm coming home. I need my laptop. Grabbed my laptop, grabbed a chair, went back up to GameStop. I was fourth in line. They had nine NES Classics. If you want to pay $80, 
then you can get up early on launch day and you can go there. You might have to get up at 3 a.m. for the SNES Classic or whatever. Not to mention, not going to encourage people to do things that they shouldn't do, but Patrick Klepek actually wrote an article about how Nintendo, with all this pre-order crap, they can no longer complain about people emulating games. Right. You can buy a Raspberry Pi. If you've got DualShock 3s or Xbox 360 controllers or other USB game pads and stuff, you can build a Raspberry Pi for 60 bucks and play any game you want to play on any system, pretty much PS1 and older. Yeah, N64, I guess, doesn't work that well. If you really want to play these games, and Nintendo's kind of forcing you to do that, if you'd rather do that than to pay $200, $250, $300 for an SNES Classic, in fact, I would tell you, don't pay that much for an SNES Classic. Go get a Raspberry Pi. Get three of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, gosh. Well, the other thing, the other side of that, which I think he mentioned, maybe it's something I made up in my mind, there's a point about how he said something like you should Oh, Klepik. I thought you meant me. I was like No, oh, no, no, not not the the listener. Oh, you okay. or whatever. Said, you know, you're taking it away from like somebody who really wants it, a true gamer, right. whatever. A, I'm a true gamer. B, I'm going to guess whoever bought my Switch is also a true gamer. They're already pay- It'd be one thing if I I know I had the option of canceling one of my two pre-orders. The other option I could have taken was to keep both of them and sell one of them at face value to somebody who may not be a true gamer and is just looking to flip flip it. it. Amen. So I know if you're willing to pay that much money, you are basically by definition a true gamer. So it's not as though because I did this, I kept a true gamer I'm putting quotes as if he said that. I don't know if he said that. Those are my words. I'm keeping a true gamer from getting their hands on the Switch. No. The guy I sold mine to is very much a true gamer. He may... I told him to watch the show. I don't know if he still does, but... I feel like that is better... I would rather see people do that than... Like, there are whole businesses now around professional line sitters basically <laughs> like you can be like hey pay me a hundred dollars and i'll go to the apple store next friday at midnight and just hang out there <clears throat> till nine in the morning you know whatever and i'll get you your iphone now chances are, i mean you could do that for like a switch if somebody wanted to say hey pay me 50 bucks i'll go to best buy gamestop wherever first thing in the morning and get that for you Okay, now you've paid three hundred fifty dollars for a switch. You can probably flip that for four hundred, four hundred fifty, whatever. Now this guy who's not a gamer is making money off of it. Like right. I'd rather somebody like me who is a gamer and is just selling it to another gamer for a little bit of a profit, but I'm making a profit on the extra effort I put in to get it in the first place, which everybody had the same chance to do. Right. So bottom line, I don't I don't feel guilty about it. Um I don't know where I would maybe feel guilty, but probably not is if somehow somebody offered me like $2,000 for the switch. Right. But even then I'd be like, if you are that willing to part with $2,000, then you have way too much money is no object to you. So again, I don't feel guilty. Like it's not like I like a PS three that I bought for 600 and sold for 1500. I bought it for 300 plus tax plus shipping. Maybe not shipping. Which one did I sell? I guess I sold the Amazon one. So I got free shipping. <coughs> but I paid tax. You I still paid, paid about $330. Tax, yeah. I sold it for 400 <coughs> I made $70. Basically, all I got out of it was a free Pro controller. Right. Like, it's not like I took advantage of somebody. They were willing. Right. They thought it was worth $400. I mean, if you bought it, it's not like I even made $100. I made $70 because of tax. This guy didn't pay tax. So, I mean... There are people who probably do really cheat people. and Is that a little low? Maybe. But at the same time, if people are willing to pay it, they've got the money to pay it. Right. And if they don't have the money to pay for it, <laughs> they're not buying and it. And they still spend that money on it, well, then they shouldn't have done issues. that. Like, yeah. So, I don't know. To me, I don't have a problem with it. I can understand people having a problem with it. Don't get me wrong. I don't have a problem with it. I don't think I do either. 
because I'm doing it. I've done it. But again, I mean, if I don't see anybody, I've never, and I'm not calling out this guy, but just in general, like when the iPhone eight or it's going to be the iPhone X, I guess we, we recorded this before the event. So if I got it wrong, sorry, the iPhone X comes out next Friday. People are going to buy that thing and they're going to flip it on eBay for $1,500, $2,000 because I don't even know what it's going to cost. It's going to cost $1,000 or something. Nobody ever really talks about that. And maybe it's just because I'm not in that circle. Maybe it's because I'm in the video game circle, but it's like, I don't hear people begrudging them that. I hear about all the, and not just from this viewer, but from people that just in general talking about the third, the, the aftermarket selling of these consoles and stuff. I don't hear anybody really complaining. Maybe people don't buy the iPhones when they go up for that much. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but the main thing, I don't feel guilty about flipping consoles. It's not something that I do regularly. Yeah, Yankees won. But again, it's kind of like you said. I, I guess it does come down to if they're willing to pay it, then they're willing to pay it. Right. If they didn't want to get up at 3, 4 in the morning to go sit in line in the cold to wait for it to go on sale to guarantee getting one because they didn't get a pre-sale because they didn't sign up for all these notifications from Wario or from somebody else to actually get a chance to pre-order it, Maybe they think it's worth their time to not have to deal with all that to just say, okay, here's 150 bucks for an eighty dollar console, or here's two hundred for an eighty dollar console, whatever it is. It's a toy. Yeah, this is not Delta or United or whoever charging two thousand dollars hurricanes to yeah. fly to evacuate from a hurricane, like, or charging five dollars a gallon for gas, like something people need. Nobody needs a Switch. Nobody right. needs an NES Classic. Nobody needs an SNES Classic. SNES, not SNES. If you say SNES Classic, then you just need to unsubscribe. Nobody needs it. I'm kidding. It's a luxury good. If you're willing to pay for it, you want it that bad, you're willing to pay for it, more power to you. Like, it's just the opposite of this is people that are selling. I know he said he's talking about new items, not old items, but like I said, I want Saturn Bomberman so bad. I finally got my hands on an old Saturn. Thanks, Mom and Dad, for throwing it out in all our games, including Saturn Bomberman. Saturn Bomberman to me is not worth $180, so I'm not going no, to pay it. Exactly. So that's just, it It works itself out. If you're willing to pay it, then you want it that bad. If you're not willing to pay it, then you didn't want it that bad, and you can wait for it to either a few years from now for the price to go down and to buy one or to go stay in line or do whatever. So Yeah. I hope that answered your question. That was kind of rambling. Bottom line, clear conscience is here. Yeah. Help her face. Hope you're still a subscriber. We do appreciate the feedback. Thank you for writing in. Hope you kind of understand our mindset. Again, we rambled a lot, but it's late and it is what it is. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, if you're watching, you're watching us at youtube.com slash two player co-op. Make sure you hit that subscribe button there. Hit the like button. Share it with your friends. How do you guys feel? Have you flipped consoles before? Do you feel guilty about it? Do you feel that it is unethical? Do you feel that this is something that should not happen? Again, the other thing I forgot to say at the end is be mad at Nintendo. Yeah. If Nintendo made enough, nobody would be flipping these things because there would be no money in it. Be mad at Nintendo. They have the means. They have the pocket. They have the money in the pockets and, and the resources and everything to make 10 million of these things for this holiday season. And if they're choosing not to do it, that's who your anger should be placed at. I forgot to say that, but I'm going to say it now. So that's that. Thank you guys so much for being here for another two-player co-op Friday show. Really appreciate it. Come on back next week for a very special episode of the podcast. But until then, Sean, take us out. Thank you for playing. Thank you. Hope you're still a subscriber. Please, please don't leave us. <laughs> Thanks, man. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.